Rock and stone rat bags, it's time to take a look at salvage missions and some top tips for you dwarves to get the most out of these missions. Salvage missions have you basically finding two or three mules that you have to go and repair. These are mini mules. Now these missions, cave structures, are always pretty much the same. You'll have one room where you'll enter and then you'll have a large chamber or cavern structures with smaller corridors going off, but they usually always circle back on each other. With the main chamber you're having to probably dig through to access. Once inside the main chamber, you then have to look out for these glowing green orbs to find the mini mules that you need to repair. They've basically got their legs lopped off and you're going to need to find three of them to get the mule back up and running. The caves can be quite complex, but there's lots of these legs all over the place. In fact, you'll find a whole bunch of them. You normally find a whole bunch of spares lying around, especially when there's only two mules instead of three to get. The fungus bogs is probably one of the hardest ones to do this though because you do need to dig the legs out the ground slightly and obviously you have to go and repair it inside the mule. So often you're going to have to take care of any of these fungal secretions that are nearby and of course the usual enemies. Once you've activated this scanner on the mule it should show up if you take more attention around the map where you can find the legs. Like I said they're normally pretty close by. In fact sometimes it's better to do this in the dark almost just to see where they will spawn and you simply got to bring them over to the mule and put them back on. This is the easy part of this mission, is getting the mule legs over to the mules. Once you repair them, they'll actually follow you around, although you can't actually deposit any minerals into them. You will, however, get a bonus amount of nitro and gold deposited into your team depository when you go ahead and repair them. And supposedly they count as an actual drop off point. So that means that if you've got the perk veteran depositor, which is in the second run of perks, you'll actually get a 20% reduction buff when you're standing close to one. But I couldn't confirm that. I couldn't tell any difference when enemies were attacking me and when they were close. You notice I just deposited some amount of resources into the actual broken orbit drop. That's because that's what you'll be using to escape. So it just means you've got another advantage in terms of dropping off resources that you want to maybe get hold of drops or supply drops. It doesn't matter what you put in either the mule or the broken down orbital drop, they both count. Once you've found both mules, that's it. You now have to start off the process so you can get this dropship back and refueled and you can make your escape on it. You should find a box like this pretty close by. Sometimes it may be in a small cavern next to the orbital drop. You just have to pay attention a little bit more to see if that's the case. Once you've repaired it, you then have to pretty much defend the point from any enemies while it uploads. So if you're a solo player and you're playing with Engineer, make sure you've got your choke points good with your turrets. Likewise, all players are back at this point and the quicker you're all within this, the quicker it goes and you can get going. If you leave the zone, that's it. It will stop or slow down. So make sure you're within the green area. So these are the pretty much the harder sections of the mission. Once that's done, you'll get a supply drop with fuel. That will drop down and you can go ahead and start replenishing the actual orbital drop and make your escape. Again, the fuel drops normally drop pretty close by, so you just have to move the pipe around and connect it up. Once that's done, you simply have to then go ahead and defend the point once more. Again, same business, just make sure you've got your choke points up and your shields and you're all within the zone to make it go quicker. And after that, you've got one minute 30 to wait for the pod to actually power up before you can make your escape. The doors will open and the ramp will eventually pop out as the countdown gets to the end of it. And then you've only got a minute to actually make your escape once that is complete and it's fully powered up. These are fairly challenging missions, especially if you're putting it on the more hazardous difficulties because you're going to have more enemies attacking you and the strength of them enemies is going to be harder. There are some bonuses that you need to look out for. When you're exploring, you may come across some strange emittance of light or maybe some debris that seems to be buried. These are ammo drops that are basically dropped below. You'll notice these also when you're looking in your cave scanner, you should find a mysterious hole and that is where these are falling in. So you can always kind of tell exactly where they are, even if you can't actually see them because sometimes they are completely under the ground. You'll have to dig it around and then go ahead and repair, but it will give you a nice little bonus of ammo. So it can be hard to spot, just like it makes a hole when you get an ammo drop, look on the actual scanner map and see if there's any strange little tunnels that are on the scanner map too. 
Secondary objectives has usually you getting either alien fossils, a pack of blooms, rollo caps, ebon and nuts, or exterminating festive fleas, or collecting 12 gunk seeds or 25 holomite. The holomite might be the easiest one if you do get that as a side quest, or indeed exterminating the festive fleas, as normally more than 10 will respawn after a few minutes if you can't find the last ones. The last few minutes where you're powering the pods up can be pretty hair raising with a number of creatures to come and attack you and you haven't really got anywhere else to just outrun and outgun them, you've literally got to hold the line until the pod is ready and escape on it. But otherwise this is a fairly simple one to complete the main objective, it's only that secondary one, sometimes when it's in this cave like this you'll find a lot of the nuts or the plants that you need to collect maybe high up on the walls of the caves. In terms of rewards, because these missions are usually always level 2 or level 3 cave complexity and cave length, you always get a nice little bonus anyway. So if you are finding them tough, don't be scared to put it on an easier difficulty. You can see I've got 5,000 XP for completing this one and the secondary objective, as well as obviously gathering some minor minerals and resources too. With this particular mission, have an abundance of gold. Although it's a serious drop if you don't complete that secondary objective as I'm showing here with 3,667 experience instead of that 5,000 mark. So yeah, make sure you've got some characters that have got flares so you can really light up some of the higher areas just in case they have put some of these seeds or plants up high as it's really, really hard to find them all sometimes. For character classes, I would recommend using the Engineer or the Scout. With obviously the platforms that you can launch, it'll be easier to get some of the seeds that may be higher up, as I mentioned earlier. Or maybe the grappling hooks just to get you around the caverns a little bit quicker, since there isn't that many windy passages. So a mission that you won't necessarily need to use lots of modifications that give you additional ammo as you'll find plenty quickly and easy repairing the mules to get the nitrite and call one in or finding them hidden caches as well. Just make sure you pay attention to your scanner. And that's it. If you've got any tips for salvage, let me know and go and check out the rest of my Deep Rock Galactic guides. Rock and stone rat bags.